Over the centuries, Cornwall has held an almost mystical fascination for outsiders. And today, many still find it an intensely spiritual place. At the heart of the diocese is Truro Cathedral. It's the seat of the Bishop of Truro, Bishop Bill, who looks after 222 parishes right across the county. At present, Bishop Bill is preoccupied with his remotest parish, five tiny inhabited Atlantic islands way off the western tip of Cornwall, the Isles of Scilly. It's a community which has survived against the odds. A fragile economy supported by local holidaymakers. A few farmers and fishermen struggling to keep going. And the ingenuity of islanders willing to turn their hands to anything to make a living. One of the most important jobs on the island is currently lying vacant. And filling the post is giving Bishop Bill some worries. If we send the wrong person, and that would be a disaster, not just for the church, but for the island. is England's most isolated community. Bathed by the warm waters of the Gulf Stream, there's a balmy, almost subtropical climate on the Isles of Scilly. On a good day, you could almost be in the Caribbean. This remains a little slice of old England. On four of the five islands, there are no cars. And with no major crime, there's Britain's smallest police force of just two officers. More than almost anywhere else in England, the traditional way of life here is held together by the Anglican priest, officially known as the chaplain to the Isles. And right now, there isn't one. Ever since the last priest left, Bishop Bill has been struggling to fill the vacancy. Over the last few months, he's made a number of visits to the Sillies. I mean, we're pointing Today, he's back for a meeting with the island's church wardens. What we're committed to, Rodney and I, is trying to find someone as quickly as we can, providing we find the right person. Oh, I, I, would, I would think the nearest job to it, which has now gone completely, is to be a lighthouse keeper. <laughs> you know, I mean... You're we, to automate us, No, 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 certainly not. No, 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 we are, the last thing we want. But you know what Do I mean? So? I mean, that you are, you are isolated. Uh, and uh, yes. it's, it, it really is very, very difficult. That would be good. But finding the right person for one of the oddest and most demanding jobs in the church is proving even harder than they thought. Weeks go by. They are, they are very, very isolated and, and very small. I mean, you're talking about three miles long, the biggest of them, I think, St Mary's. You are in, incredibly restricted in one way. I mean. Um, if you walk for three miles, you, uh, you just fall off the edge of the world, you know. You can't, there's no escape, in other words. To go there on holiday is one thing, to go there and live is another. If you sent someone um, who, who wasn't good at holding confidences, who didn't understand the importance of the interrelatedness to lots of the people, um, I think that would have a, dr a really drastic effect on the life of the islands. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Meanwhile, life on the Sillies must go on. Bishop Bill has asked 69-year-old Reverend Donald Marr to come out of retirement and hold the fort for the duration. Oh, that's a nice headline for me, isn't it? Gay clergy ultimatum set to split Anglicans. Well, I'm quite happy. I mean, if gay's happy, that's me. <laughs> Sharing the workload is his wife, Margaret, also a retired priest. The islanders call us the Reverend Bogoffs, because <laughs> there's two of us. Buy one of us and you get the other one free. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a physically demanding job. Donald has to catch the tide and race between islands to keep up with his scattered congregations. Very, very special 
placed. Some years ago, Donald suffered a major stroke. Now he has to have regular checks with the island's GP to monitor his health. Margaret, keeping OK? Yep. You will call press me. on the spot there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well done. My contribution to the NHS. That's excellent. <laughs> the bishop knows he can't expect Donald to look after things here for much longer. The island's economy depends almost entirely on tourism. It's a favourite for holidaymakers who tend to return year after year. But recently, the huge popularity of cheap flights abroad has started to threaten the long-term future of the islands. Because it has such a mild climate, the holiday season here begins early in the year. It's launched by the biggest event in the island's calendar. Gig racing is the fastest growing sport in the West Country. And from early March, the ferry starts bringing in gig boats from almost every port and harbour in Devon and Cornwall for the World Gig Racing Championships. The island's police constable, PC Steve Gardner, is facing the busiest few weeks of the year and may be needing some help from the mainland. Thanks very much for that. Cheers, Graham. Bye. Bye. 130 miles to the east in Plymouth, a world away from Scilly, the waterside pubs and bars are already filling up with hundreds of young people, beginning a long evening's drinking. It's a bank holiday weekend, and at police headquarters, the reinforced evening shift is being briefed for what could well be a violent night. Okay. Obviously, it's going to be a busy Sunday night. The Barbican area, I've been told, is uh, well populated at the moment. There's a lot of drinkers out. We've got a unit of... For a key member of the team, this is the last shift in Plymouth for quite a while. Last shift of the weekend, and um, Nicky's last shift. So hopefully it's, it's a good one tonight. WPC Nikki Green has been patrolling inner city Plymouth for four years. Now she's looking forward to taking a break. It doesn't take many people to, um, to have a public order situation, really. But as you can see, people are carrying glasses and bottles around and can get quite potentially quite dangerous. It only takes a few people that have had too many, get a bit angry and, and they start a fight. It doesn't take long for the mood to turn nasty. First thing next morning, WPC Nikki Green is booked into an early morning helicopter flight from Penzance. I think it's time to do something else now. The job came up. I've got no ties. I thought I'll, uh, I'll do something a bit different. Have you been to the Cinellas before? I went once on a day trip, once uh, after I'd applied. I didn't know what, quite what I was expecting, but uh, it was beautiful, yes. Yeah. Certainly enjoyed the day I was there and can't wait to go there now. It's a bit of a shot in the dark. So you don't really know what you're living yourself in for. No, not really, but then, you know, that's the whole excitement of it, really, I suppose. So. They've given her a small flat next to the police station on St Mary's. And tomorrow it'll be straight down to work, with PC Steve and his sergeant keeping the peace on the Isles of Scilly. It's likely to be a rather different sort of policing than Nicky's been used to. Fog is an occupational hazard for the islanders. Often boats can't sail and helicopters and planes are grounded, increasing the feeling of remoteness and isolation. For the volunteers who organise the gig championships, today's fog couldn't have come at a worse moment. They are all islanders with other jobs who gladly give up their time to help ensure the event is a success. It's not very good weather, is it? It doesn't bode well. Well, you tend to only have fog for three days in Scilly, so hopefully by the weekend it'll be gone. <laughs> That's the plan. But as the hours go by, the fog refuses to budge. The Reverend Donald, who's been holidaying on the Sillies for years, is only too aware of what's at stake. 
it's a big weekend in the life of the island, both for the visitors, 2,000 odd visitors will come in that weekend, but for the islanders too, because gigs are ours. Gigs were born here in the Scillies. They were the boats that the island pilots went out to bring ships from the western approaches. Now they're our greater sport, gig racing. It's something that's good to be reminded at the moment that human beings work better when they're working together. You can't row a gig on your own. You're not a gig man yourself. I'm not a gig man. Many, many years ago when I was in the Royal Navy, I used to row whalers, which are bigger and heavier than the gig of today here. But no, I've not done any gig rowing, and at my age, I'm not going to begin. On the other side of the main island from the capital, Hughtown, lives the vet, Rick Barrowman. He's the only vet on the Sillies, and as such, he has to be on hand seven days a week to care for every kind of animal. The Bichons and these other small yeah. breeds like this are prone to a condition called collapsing trachea. <laughs> I think just a five-day course of each will be sufficient. Okay. He also has to do a lot of travelling. I'm going off to see a, a few cows for one of my, one of my farm clients. Uh, a guy called Tim Hicks, who farms on one of the off islands, um, St Agnes. He is actually the most southwesterly house in Britain. Like most islanders, Rick gets around by bike, and the timing of his visits to the outer off islands is entirely determined by the weather, the state of the tides, and the availability of the boats. Good morning, Fraser. Okay. You, Ag you Agnes this morning? Oh, yeah, I am, yeah. Uh, Travelling first Steve. class. <laughs> Meanwhile, WPC Nikki Green is on her first day in the new job, shadowing her colleague Steve. There's a lot of people to meet. This is Nikki, this is a summer piece here. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm all right. Yeah, all right, yeah. Well, I'm sure if you want to trip out to sea fishing one day. My dad will when he comes over. Really? <laughs> yeah. You want to come here more? It's a rare sight, is it? Yeah, it's an impossible Do people want to stop and take a photograph in Plymouth? Oh, not very often. <laughs> they want to do a lot of things but not take a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly different atmosphere. Here, <laughs> Definitely. It? How are your sea legs? Um, they're all right around the water here, but I went up with a customs cutter last year and uh, I felt pretty sick. Uh, there's been a few times when I think, well, I'd rather be back on land, but. Uh, yeah, so you, get, you get seasick, do you? I suffer from seasickness today, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Nicky? As far as I know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> In the old days, the police had their own launch to get around. Now they too must use the holiday ferries in order to pound the beat on the outer islands. Yeah. When the tides are wrong, you've got to go around the back, and that's when it gets a little bit choppy. I'm not too keen on that, yeah. <laughs> that's when I pick my words and... Oh, no. <laughs> for the rest of the day then, so... <laughs> Over on the quay at St Agnes, Rick the vet is being dropped off. He's met by a farmer who's pleased to see him. Several of his cows need urgent attention. Here on St Agnes, the population is just 64. Most of them tenants of Prince Charles and the Duchy of Cornwall, which owns most of the islands. On the way to the farm, they pass the island school. Two pupils, one teacher. Fantastic, excellent. How's that looking? Let's see. Rick's here to trim the cow's hooves. This is just like having your toenails clipped. And later, dehorn the younger cattle. Halfway between the bud and the eye, yeah. you want to be underneath that ridge. Under. Horns on cattle are something you can best do without. And the best time to get rid of them is at this age, and they just have a little bud about the size of your fingernail. And we just take that off with a, with a, with a hot, bit of local anaesthetic, freeze it, and then take that off with a, with a hot iron. If they didn't have Rick, farmers here would be in real trouble. Flying out a vet from the mainland would be prohibitively expensive. All the locals are expected to help keep island life ticking over. 
Later, the farmer races off to his other island job. Hi, good evening. It's crew manager Tim Hicks from St Agnes, Isle Scilly, Romeo 3. He's in charge of the local volunteer fire brigade, and tonight it's their weekly practice. First ground, lay him down there. We'll assume that that's... They don't have a fire engine because a fire tractor's deemed more suitable. And because most of the men don't have driving licences, a provisional L-plate must be displayed. WPC Nikki Green is still on her first day tour to meet key island personnel. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Tresco. Margaret, my wife. Hello. I'm Donald. Hi. Hey. Good, hey. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. Yes. Have you lived on an island before? Um, no, no. Oh, no. so it's all yeah. new. Very new. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've got a good relationship with everyone across here. So. Yeah. Um, you either pick up the phone or we'll ring you if you, yeah. if you exactly. want to know something, isn't it? It, it really is community you know, policing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, helping the community be what it does best, yeah. caring for itself. Yeah. Uh, Margaret and I have been here. We're retired, but it's a, a retirement job. We get a house to live in here uh, for free, uh, but we're not paid for anything that we do. Yeah. So we're looking after all five islands and six churches, because okay. St Mary's has got the two churches. Um, until such time as a new chaplain, we call them in the islands, a new chaplain arrives. Right. Well, you know what they call us here on this island, because we're, we're both ordained? The Reverend Bogoffs. Buy one, get, get one free. free. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the Cornish mainland, and Bishop Bill has had a spate of promising inquiries about the vacant Silly's post. The islands of Scilly are 28 miles from the mainland. There are four little schools, really, for children under the age of 11. But there is one secondary school on, on the main island, St Mary's. One of those inquiries has come from the old fishing village of Mullion, not far from the bishop's HQ on the southern Cornish coastline. Like so many other small ports and harbours around here, Many seafaring traditions have survived. I dreamt that I was kissing you. At the Mounts Bay pub, the men gather every week to sing sea shanties. And she said, Little eyes, I love you. Little eyes, I love you. I love you best of all. One of the stalwarts is Guy Scott. He's better known to the locals as Father Guy. After a variety of jobs which included working as a farm labourer and as a chauffeur, Guy Scott was ordained five years ago and has been the priest in Mullion and the surrounding parishes for only two and a half years. And Nancy becoming husband and wife. <laughs> Father Guy may not have been here long, but already he's very much part of village life. Come here, you! <laughs> Bigger piss than I am, he is. And his wife Kate and two daughters have settled effortlessly into this tight knit community. <laughs> but unbeknown to most of his parishioners, Father Guy has a secret that at this stage he can't reveal to anyone. He's thinking of applying for the job of chaplain to the Isles of Scilly. And for some reason, uh, this vacancy on the Isles wouldn't leave my mind. I was thinking, what on earth is this about? Because Kate, I and the girls are very happy here. We're very settled and we love it. Um, but I just think, what's, well, no, why, why is the sillies nagging away in my mind? The only way I can articulate it, and it's like um, my vocation, it's like a fishing line. You can't be seen, can't see it, but you're tugged along. So Guy's in a real dilemma. He has a powerful calling to apply for the job, but knows that in reality, right now, it's not really a feasible proposition. 
On the Sillies, it's the day of the big gig racing championships, and not even a whisper of fog. Down on Town Beach, conditions are looking promising for the gigs. And it's all hands to the pump. Even Rick the Vet has been press ganged into service to help out at race headquarters by the beach. There's no fog this morning. No, we got a bit, bit calmer than yesterday, but we got enough breeze to keep the fog away. So I think, uh, let's not be too cocky, but I think we could be in for a good day's ride. Rick's in charge of collating all tonight's race results. And being the vet, he's also been appointed chief safety officer. Because the helicopters are expensive, most visitors take the three hour trip from Penzance on the island's ferry, the Salonian. And today, the unexpectedly bright weather has brought a bumper cargo of holidaymakers keen to see the racing. For the first time since she arrived, WPC Nikki Green finds herself quite busy. The locals seem to have taken quite a shine to her. Are we off? Yeah. See you on all weekend, See you later. Bye. See you later. Yeah, late this weekend, on day today, and then late Saturday, Sunday, so Monday. So we see you on the so. beach on Sunday night? Yeah, yeah. Clearing up after everyone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, just up the road is the chaplaincy, the official home to the chaplain to the Isles of Scilly. Caretaker priest, the Reverend Donald, and his wife, Margaret, are effectively camping out here until the post is filled. They've been lent furniture by the locals. So here you are, you're all set for a, um, a stay, the duration of which you're not aware it's of. how long was a piece of string, yes. Did you ever expect to have to suddenly be thrust into the fore, <laughs> foreground and hold the fort in this way? <laughs> no, 15 years ago when I lay in a hospital bed uh, and Margaret was told to prepare herself for the worst, uh, I hadn't, no, beyond the wildest dream to think that, that I would have the chance at the end of my ministry to come and minister in such a wonderful, wonderful place. You know what they often say about the islands, that they're, they're just on the edge of Britain, but a whole world away. There is a slower pace to life here, and our days and our weeks and our months are guided not by a watch or a calendar, but by the tides and the season. What can happen is dictated by what the state of the water is at any particular moment. Out on the start line of the big race, nearly 100 pilot gigs and 700 crew are assembling off the island of St Agnes, waiting for the off and the two-mile slog to Hewtown on St Mary's. They've been joined by hundreds of sightseers, and hundreds more are heading out to join them. WPC Nikki Green is ambitious and believes that time spent community policing on a remote and unusual place like this will be good for her career. And she's slightly surprised by how easily she's made the transition from her previous posting in inner city Plymouth. I feel like I've sort of settled in and I start, you know, people walk down the street and say, well, hi, Nikki, you know, and it's really nice. But you've only so, been here a week. I know. <laughs> it feels like I've been here for ages. Yeah, but it's really nice. Yeah, go and have a little cup of tea stops on the way around and going for chats and you know I feel like I've been here so much longer than a week. So you're not homesick then? No, I'm sort of surprised myself actually. For somebody that so you know loves being at home, you know, with my family, I've I've, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed being here. Lots of hunky young men knocking around this weekend. I haven't weekend. seen any or am I just a bit fussy? <laughs> I think you're quite fussy. <laughs> I haven't I, maybe I should go walk around here a bit more but yeah. Uh, Do you have a boyfriend back in the mainland? Uh, no, no. A single girl? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I tend to find the, uh, <coughs> shall we say, find the, what? The, the most difficult ones, shall we say. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find some difficult ones. There is week. a word for it, but I wouldn't like to say it. <laughs> Out on the water in near perfect conditions, the big race is at last underway. As the light starts to fade, the rowers take on a timeless quality that generations of seamen going back hundreds of years would recognize and admire. It's turning out to be a dream start to the new season. All that's required now 
is for the islands to find a new chaplain to the Isles to take over as the spiritual leader of this proud but vulnerable community. Back on the mainland in Mullion, Father Guy has...